Hi all, let's have a look at another Mikhail Tal game from the Student Olympiad of 1957. So his opponent here was Sieghart Ditzman. D4 for Mikhail Tal. We see knight f6, c4, and the opponent plays a king's engine defense. Mikhail Tal elects for the Simish variation, so f3, black castles, bishop e3. So a pretty standard idea is queen d2, castling and exchanging off this bishop. E5, D5. In the meantime, black is quick to prepare F5 here. Queen D2, F5. Now, white castles queenside. Knight D7. Now, bishop D3, this F5 point is pressured a little bit here. Knight D, F6. Knight G, E2. A6. And now more pressure on F5 with queen C2. So white is seriously threatening now to take that pawn off. Queen e8 sets a little trap actually now. If e takes e5, e takes f5, this wasn't played. But say white was greedy, then this would backfire because there's knight takes d5 here. Now hitting the queen without any check. Purpose of queen e8 holds the knight here and stops queen e6 check. So this would be better for black especially taking off this bishop. So that's avoided, that little trap, you could say. Uh, rook e1, b5, but black looks to have an aggressive position on both sides of the board. This seems to be the thematic breaks being played against white's pawn structure. Now, Tau takes on f5, b takes, which opens up that b file. Is this looking a little bit dangerous for Mikhail Tau? We see g takes f5 here. If bishop takes f5, that looks active, but maybe just queen d2 here, and white threatens things like g4. So black played taking with the pawn. We have h3 now, queen f7. Now g4, knight f4, and it's here that white seems to be getting a good position. But... In general, white doesn't want to give up the dark square bishop in this kind of structure. However, guess what Tal played now? Okay, he did take on f4, because white is traditionally weak on the dark squares. This might be a surprising move in some respects to see. And now, with the king on c1, is it too dangerous to take here on f4? What would you play? Tau did indeed take on f4 because after bishop h6 trying to exploit that king on c1 white to play here if I give you five seconds to pause the video the point now is revealed g5 white is setting up an almighty pin on that g file after bishop takes rook hg1 pinning that bishop now knight g4 unpins and immediately threatens bishop takes f4 check. Tal holds the knight though and there's still a nasty pin situation which has emerged here. Queen f6 trying to hold things together. h4. Bishop takes h4. And white is not too quick to take here. He could perhaps take there but he just plays this. Rook b8. Now taking that piece, f takes, there might be a concern about bishop f5 here. This is parried in advance, hitting h7, that's protected. King b1, bishop d7, knight c3, white seems to be consolidating here. Now after knight e6, yes, this seems to be winning further material. Queen takes f1 check, rook takes f1. Rook takes f1 check. And now not taking on f1, but knight d1 might even be better here. So knight d1, the queen is attacked. Queen b3 holding the knight still. And threatening queen b8 check in some lines now. Bishop b5 stopping the access to b8. But white now takes on f1. And a4, white is just simply material up and winning this position. So after bishop d3 check, king a2, 
black resigned here. I think there are some interesting points here. It's a good advert for the Simish variation and um, white putting pressure on the F5 point. So I think there's a few instructive points revealed here. Now, in some of the later rounds, Tao's opponents really step up in strength. So, but I hope you got something from this game. Comments, questions, likes, shares appreciated. Thanks very much.